Hello ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to an exciting episode of Blood Servations by Nevis. I am really excited to have you all here today. In this podcast, we embark on a captivating journey through an ever-evolving technology landscape, exploring latest trends and groundbreaking innovations. I am your host, Suresh Rao, Cloud Finance Practitioner here at Nevis Solutions. In today's episode, we have an enthralling topic to delve into, Gen AI Unleashed, the dawn of artificial creativity. And to make it even more exciting, we have not just one, but two special guests who are not only a dear friends of mine, but true passionate cloud enthusiasts. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Adarsh Prabhu, Associate Director, Technology and Innovation at Nivea Solutions, and Rupesh Shetty, Vice President, Data Analytics Practice at Nivea Solutions. Thank you, Adarsh, and thank you, Rupesh, for joining us. Thanks, thanks. thanks. Right. So before we get started, right, so I think it's very important to set a clear distinction between Gen AI and Predictive AI. Right. So how does Gen AI set apart from Predictive AI? And what are the various differentiating in terms of capabilities between Gen AI and Predictive AI? Uh, thanks, Suraj. Uh, I think the names themselves give it away. Uh, predictive AI, as it sounds, uh, it predicts something, right? And Generative AI, it generates something. Absolutely. If I take a very simple example, I think uh, a use case of predictive AI would be give a set of images of cats and dogs and the model can tell you that it's confident that this is a cat and it's confident that this is a dog. So it's predicting something. It has a set of images that it's trained with. Uh, it understands that, that this is a cat and this is a dog, right? So it's predicting something. Generative AI, on the other hand, it generates an image of a cat. You can tell it, generate an image of a black cat, it can generate an image of a black cat because it knows this is how a black cat looks like. Okay. Absolutely. And if you say generate an image of a black cat uh, in front of Taj Mahal, it knows how a black cat looks, it knows how a Taj Mahal looks, it can bring it together and generate an image. So that's a simple way of uh, identifying a uh, predictive AI from a generative AI. Right. Uh, now, in, in an industry use case, if I talk about uh, uh, how predictive AI would be used, um, I think uh, if we go to BFSIs, right? So there is a lot of fraud detection. So there is a lot of fraud that has already been identified. So a predictive AI model would be trained on this data, and uh, when a new record comes in, or when a new data is uh, uh, coming in, right? So the model will be able to confidently identify that there is a fraud. Or it looks like a fraud and it is 80% confident that it is a fraud. You're looking at it because it's been trained on data that identifies itself as fraud versus non-fraud, right? Uh, whereas generative AI has other use cases where uh, people who want to generate are, are, are in a creative uh, mindset, right? So they want to generate something. So if, if I'm launching a new product, I want to generate a new image of a product or I want to create a new catalog for a product. Right? So it takes a lot of time and effort to do this. Right? So generative AI can help you do this. It, it, it knows how a product catalog would have looked. It's trained on that and it can give you content around that. So this is this is based difference between a predictive AI and generative AI. Thanks, thanks Adarsh uh, for that um, insight. Right? Um, now that we know uh, what is a clear distinction between uh, Gen AI and predictive AI, so, Rupesh, could you help us with some examples of how this Gen AI has been, uh, it's been harnessed to fuel the growth across multiple industries? Uh, thanks, Suraj. Uh, good question. And this is something that uh, uh, will be of lot of interest to many people because uh, yeah, this question keeps on coming to us. Uh, uh, when we look at various industries, I mean, we are talking about retail, e-commerce, BFSI, Automotive. These are the industries that we are working um, within Navius. And one of the key challenges that uh, we, uh, the industry experts, talk about is uh, while we are generating a lot of data in terms of putting them into warehouses, data lakes, how do we get the access to it um, in a more easier way, right? And uh, this is where I feel Gen AI can play a large role. Uh, because we feel that Gen AI is going to democratize the whole process. So it's very close to data democratization. 
uh, so let me take some few examples uh, across the industries and with different personas. Um, uh, one could be a sales and marketing persona. So this Gen AI solution can be used um, to look at three areas. One is in terms of what has been the past performance of his uh, department, uh, as well as the future performance in terms of predicting what could be the sales numbers for a particular product across a region or a particular uh, quarter on quarter growth. Uh, right, And the second area that we can look at is in terms of understanding the customer, uh, how receptive are in terms of how they are looking at our product, do they need any fine tuning, do we need a fine tuning in terms of product or maybe which product has to be sold to which customer segment. Uh, the third uh, one would be around automation. Uh, this could be in terms of saying that how can I produce something more efficiently. And one of the examples that come to my mind is in terms of how to uh, write contracts with the con uh, with the client, right? And this is maybe a tedious process, but uh, once we have a Gen AI solution, it kind of gives you that contractual document in a very short time frame. So this saves uh, uh, the whole time effort to produce those documents. So uh, and this applies to different personas, uh, HR, finance, operations, to different industries. Um, so all in all, I, I would say uh, one is in terms of data democratization, other in terms of uh, understanding customers and uh, uh, looking at how to reduce cost by doing automation. So these are these are the key things that I, I would say uh, how Gen AI is solving across industries. Absolutely. I think this sounds really fascinating, um, right, Rupesh. It's good to know that Gen AI is actually solving a lot of use cases throughout the industries. Right. So now, now that we know the differences between Gen AI and P2A, and we also uh, know that how this Gen AI is powering multiple industries to solve various complex uh, problems, right? So, how how are Nevius and Google uh, co um, Cloud collaboration is empowering businesses to adopt to this Gen AI solutions? So, yeah. Let let me answer that. I mean. Uh... Uh, so, Nevius has been one of the very few partners who has uh, got early access to the Google Gen AI platform. Uh, uh, so, due to that, what has happened is um, both the practitioners from Nevius as well as Google have worked closely to uh, develop a Gen AI platform, a Nevius Gen AI platform that uh, will cater to all the use cases which I just talked about, right? Uh, now, this Gen AI platform can be taken to the industries and we can quickly deploy them uh, right, as a solution. Um, the question after that is like how do we engage, right? I mean this, this is something that um, all the industries are asking in terms of how can I use the Gen AI solution. So there are two primary engagement models that um, uh, we leverage, one is in terms of look at specific use cases which uh, cater to that industry and this can be uh, discovered through Gen AI workshops where we educate the executive as well as the, uh, the whole department in terms of what is Gen AI and then brainstorm in terms of what use cases we can take to uh, quick execution or in terms of the second engagement model would be in terms of saying that okay you have all the departments within the organization why don't we have a Gen AI COE now, COE consists of multiple practitioners with the knowledge of uh, the front-end uh, technologies, with the knowledge of uh, the ML part or the AI part in terms of LLM, in terms of how to configure the database, how to get the data into the database. So this COE team will help us realize multiple use cases across the organization. So uh, I, I feel these models will help us to uh, take the Gen AI solutions quickly uh, to the market. And uh, this is what we would prefer, and this is how we are working closely with Google Cloud. It's a fantastic, um, right, Rupesh. I think it's good to know that Nevia is being one of the Google partner, having a first privilege access to Gen AI solutions. So, Adish, coming back to you. So, what are the recent work being done with the Gen AI platform? So, I think Rupesh did touch upon the platform that we have created, right? So, uh, this platform we have built based on the technology point, touch points of Gen AI, right? So, we talked about different industries using Gen AI, but when we see the underlying technologies that it touches, they are finite, 
right i'm using gen ai to read documents and summarize it i'm using gen ai to go and read structured data and then summarize it or i'm going to use gen ai to go to big query analytical data and uh, uh, give me uh, data analytics or something else right there are finite things that we want so we wanted to build a very plug in uh, plug and play platform where uh, the solutions everyone knows mm -hmm. but the time taken to build this solution is minimum and is plug and play so that's why we built this platform uh, uh, at nevius um, we know tomorrow there's a insurance company comes with a question or a requirement saying that my analysts want a chat platform or a chat interface to query big query data we know in the back end we know that this platform can do it easily we just have to build a chat platform to enable him access right so we know next if somebody wants to uh, summarize a document we just need to give him an interface where he has to upload this document we know behind the scenes i have a platform which can read this document use up llm and get the data back to him right so it's the, we just want to make that quick transformations between the requirement gathering or uh, the discovery that we do and till get the solution out in the market because gen ai uh, it's it's very easy to implement gen ai it's not that difficult i think to identify the use case and how we solve it that is the most difficult thing to do we want to take the uh, mundane part the actual querying and the platform thing we want to simplify that so that is what we have done i think the recent work has been to stabilize this platform and create a platform that enables us to get use cases out as fast as possible i think that's that's the recent work that has gone into gen ai for us and since we have been with uh, i mean since we had preview uh, with google since a very long time i think we had that initial time where nobody had access to these llms uh, to do our research on llm and now we get our time to build this platform which is uh, which makes it faster and easier to build use cases around it fantastic Right, so we understand that each technology comes with their own risk and limitations. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Rupesh, what are the risk or limitations that needs to be addressed while implementing this Gen AI solutions? Yeah. So, uh, thanks, Suraj. Uh, I think this is one of uh, the areas that we get uh, a lot of questions on uh, because with every new technology comes with uh, comes with some risk and limitations, right? And the client is always worried in terms of how secure is Gen AI? Um, so while I talk about the risk, uh, I'll let others elaborate in terms of what are the limitations and his point of view on that. Um, uh, some of the risks that uh, uh, the client is more concerned about in terms of what happens to the data, which is more secure right now, right? Without using Gen AI, he's, he's kind of comfortable that, with, that the data is not getting shared with anybody, it is secure and it, only the people who need to have access has the access. Uh, now that we are talking about access to a lot of structured databases, uh, documents, uh, what happens if I upload those to the Gen AI solution, right? And uh, this is something they will say that, okay, uh, um, uh, should I do this because uh, I might land up in a situation where my data has been compromised. Uh, so we want to just uh, maybe spend some time on that. So. Uh, our point of view and this is what Gen AI has been uh, emphasizing is about uh, the data being secure and private. Uh, so what is getting uploaded uh, from uh, a client's environment is, is secure in terms of it is just being used to create a version of the model which is already available in public. Uh, this also assures that the data that will be trained for in the model remains in the client's private environment. Uh, so, all in all, it says that there is no risk involved and we have also tested this with multiple client environments, with multiple client uh, data sets uh, and there is, uh, there is no reason to be kind of, uh, uh, kind of worried about the whole data privacy thing. I think let, uh, I will let others kind of clarify more things about responsible AI and other limitations that we should be uh, careful about. 
uh, Adarsh over to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think irrespective of whether you're using Gen AI or uh, predictive AI or any kind of AI, right? I think response responsibly using the AI is paramount, right? You can't. There's no way around it. Absolutely. I think the recent movie Mission Impossible, if you have watched it already, I think it talks about how a rogue code uh, is trying to destroy the world or is trying to take over the world. I don't think such thing is... Uh, so how a rogue code is trying to take over the world. I'm not saying your Gen AI is going to take over the world, but uh, use it responsibly. I think that is paramount. There's no way around it. Uh, around the limitations, I think there's a word that comes in day in, day out, hallucinations. I think most of the LLMs, large language models, hallucinate a lot. Uh, when I say hallucinate, they give wrong answers very confidently. Okay, So they are supposed to generate content. They do generate content. The content may be wrong. They do it very confidently. Okay, it's like we answering Viva questions, right? I mean, we answer it confidently, assuming that the other person also doesn't know and uh, doesn't uh, comment on it. But uh, yeah, hallucination is a big limitation when it comes to large language models. There are ways to prevent it or even reduce it to some extent. Uh, prompt engineering is one way of uh, getting the right answers. Um, the Gen AI doesn't really know that it has given a wrong answer, but there are feedback mechanisms that you can give back to the model, uh, which can help it predict or generate content better the next time, right? So it doesn't know, uh, it, it, most of the time it gives you an answer, generates an answer. It doesn't know it is right or wrong. Uh, the more feedback you give to it, the more it gives a better answer the next time. So I think hallucination is a big limitation when it comes to these LLMs. Uh, there are a lot of workarounds around it. I think that's you need to know how to use these powerful tools, right? So I think that's that's uh, my answer around limitations. Great. Thank, thanks a lot, uh, Rupesh and Adarsh, for sharing those valuable insights on the risk and limitations that needs that we need to be aware of, right? So on in so all in all, I think we are in the curves of the transformative era. Yeah. Right, and thank you, uh, Rupesh and uh, no, Adesh, for joining us today and sharing your valuable insights on this Gen AI. Right, all right. So, now that brings us to the end of today's captivating episode of Gen AI Unleashed the dawn of artificial creativity. We hope that you enjoyed our in depth exploration of Gen AI and its immense potential to revolutionize industries. Stay tuned for upcoming episode where we continue to unravel the latest technological trends and innovations. Until next time, keep embracing the power of technology. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.